And now a very exciting guest, uh, very excited to announce that we have Kirsten Yorna joining us from Brussels. She's the Deputy, sorry, Director General for Internal Market, Industry, Entrepreneurship and SMEs. Uh, she's a German national and civil servant working at the European Commission where she's held various uh, positions, including head of cabinet for several commissions and serving as deputy director general in the economic and financial affairs general directorate. That's a mouthful. Uh, but additionally, she has held positions on the board of both the European Investment Bank and the European Investment Fund. It's a great honor to have her with us. With us Kirsten, the floor is yours. Take it away. Thank you very much, Malcolm, uh, for this. And gentlemen, thank you also my, very much uh, for, uh, for this video, which uh, connects very well to what I want to say to you. I want you to ride a wave. And that's the renovation wave, which we will be bringing out next week. Um, let me explain. The ecosystem that you are, uh, the construction ecosystem, is one of the biggest ecosystems uh, in uh, in the European economy. You know, we have 14 ecosystems that irrigate and nurture the European economy and construction is one of the biggest with uh, 20, uh, 22 million workers with 5 million companies and with 10.15% uh, of EU added value. That's massive. So you're one of the biggest construction uh, um, ecosystems, but you are also one of the most relevant for the green and digital transition, which was uh, explained in the uh, video before. And let me give you three headline numbers why that is so. 30. 30% 30 of all energy consumed uh, in Europe is for heating and cooling. 40. 40% 40 of all CO2 emissions generated in Europe come from existing buildings. And another 30, 30% 30 of all waste is construction waste. Now here's the challenge. And now here is also the opportunity, which is more important. Uh, in our renovation wave, we look, as was said before in the video, at the holistic system. We're looking at uh, the renovation wave to power this green and digital transition of your ecosystem. Um, we're looking at materials, low carbon materials. I'm talking about green cement, uh, I'm talking about wood, I'm talking about maybe other new solutions that we will found, be found. So we need to develop new uh, materials and obviously also new machines to handle these materials. I'm talking about sensors. We will need to make our future buildings smart to optimize uh, energy consumption and CO2 emission uh, at the same time. That means having the right sensors, but also being able to handle the sensors, being able to collect, uh, monitor and process data from these sensors to make the system work. It also means having the right skills. Um, already before the crisis, 70% of our companies across the 40 ecosystem said, we don't have the right skills for, for, for doing this, digital, uh, this twin transition. So we uh, proposed uh, a month ago the European Skills uh, Agenda, which looks at every single ecosystem, including the construction ecosystem, and brings together the relevant actors per ecosystem in round tables for skills. And these round tables will, um, will help to identify what are the skill needs, so for the employers to say, but also what are the skill What's the skill set we have today? And if there is a gap, which is uh, mostly the case, then we have to define what to do about it. How do we upskill and reskill? How do we have the programs? Um, how do we make sure that the upskilling and reskilling is actually the skills that, we, that will be needed in the future? And most importantly, who's going to invest into this? Um, these round, uh, round tables with the CEOs involving both our commissioners, uh, Commissioner Breton and Commissioner Schmidt, for social affairs, they are ongoing at the moment, and we expect uh, in the European Skills Week, uh, beginning of November, to have a number of pacts for skills where there is a plan and the money, and where everybody agrees to walk the talk. We also need rules to be fit for purpose for this renovation wave, and uh, here we have to look at European rules, but also at national rules. 
European rules first. Uh, we are looking at uh, one piece of legislation that's very relevant to you, which is the Machinery Safety Directive. Uh, and we, ex they, we expect to work on that in, in the first half. Uh, the idea is to have an AI component and to really we, I mean, to look again at the essential requirements to be sure that this is fit for purpose. Um, and that brings me, you know, that echoes what I said before about the census, for example. Um, but then there is also the, uh, the, the, the construction product regulation, which unfortunately is not really fit for purpose. Uh, you may experience that every day. So we will also be looking at that to make sure that that works in a better way. And then, yes, we will also be looking at national rules uh, in the context of a single market enforcement task force, which was just created and which is uh, it's a very powerful uh, setup because it combines member states and the commission. So rather than, you know, the commission telling the member state and the member state saying, oh, no, 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 uh, uh, I don't I don't want to change anything. We've put everybody together and we will be looking at such things as architects, very relevant for the construction for the renovation wave because today an architect who knows his thing and who knows maybe about new materials if he wants to work in another or she in another member state they have to take a new insurance so if they work in several member states they have to take i don't know how many insurances that's absurd because actually we have uh, uh, harmonized the insurance market but today there are still 19 member states having these strange rules. So that's what we have to attack to make it better. And then we have to look at planning capacity. There's a lot of money coming down now from the next generation Europe instrument, 750 billion in total, but we need to invest it in a good way. And for good investment, I don't have to tell you, you need to plan in a good way. And that's not always uh, the case uh, when we look at different national administrations. So we are helping them to actually plan in a good way, this renovation wave and the projects linked to it. And then, of course, money. Um, and there is not only private money, uh, but there is also public money, but they have to come together. You will not be able to finance all by public money. So we need to give investors certainty and security so that they do want to invest. And, uh, and here um, I'd like to mention that 30% of the 750 billion that we're spending um, on the next generation EU we will take up from the market, 30% will be green bonds. That's a challenge. And that's money that requires projects, projects and renovation wave to deliver these projects to make these bonds green. For example, we're also working on taxonomy, which is the globally first standard, gold standard for investors uh, to identify what's, uh, what's sustainable and what's not in terms of investment activities. Uh, that's going to be very important. And we see a huge investor appetite also for this type of uh, reassurance where they invest their money. So, ladies and gentlemen, the renovation wave, that's your industrial strategy. Um, and uh, you, we ask you, we hope you will ride this wave. We will support you uh, as best we can with investment, with uh, the right regulatory framework, with the right governance. We are looking at building a governance uh, and platform in the uh, renovation, in the uh, kind of ecosystem, construction ecosystem, uh, and obviously also with our renewed trade uh, trade toolbox to, uh, to support. So I hope you'll walk with us, you'll ride with us. Thank you very much.